My name is Dr. Jason West and I help sick people get better. We have a very eclectic, integrative practice where we take chiropractic, acupuncture, naturopathy, clinical nutrition, medicine, and we help people that have been sick for years and it's like Humpty Dumpty, we put them back together again. Well Jason, I'm always looking for more solutions for my patients because there's a lot that conventional medicine isn't able to do. And so when I heard about you and some of the work you're doing, I wanted to find out more. So just like you, um, Trevor, I'm really fascinated by what therapies are helping people. I heard about this treatment making this enormous impact on people's energy levels. What I think happens with people when they get sick is they start to lose their energy. And when you lose your energy, you basically start borrowing things from your organs and tissues to try and run your essential body processes. The light helps to purify the blood. It helps to stimulate energy production in the, in the cells. It's really helping to eliminate toxins. And certainly in my clinical experience, we've seen some amazing breakthroughs. Our niche is getting people that have chronic unresolved health problems and usually they've been chewed up by the medical system. They're a round peg that they're trying to put into a square hole. They're looking for something different. Once we get them healthy, we want to make sure that they stay healthy. I've noticed that people, even strangers, are sweeter to me as, they, as I approach them, even as you're checking out at Target or anything. Um, at a hotel, I had complete strangers come up and give me a gift just because they want wanted me to know that I was cared about. Even my dentist yesterday said, why is it every time I see you now I want to hug you? And I said, because I need it. And he senses it. And I think people sense that I'm in a tender spot. I just recently celebrated my birthday and it was kind of um, tender there where I thought, what if I don't have another one? What if I don't get to have more? So Mindy, about four years ago, you had a cancer diagnosis. You went through a, a medical treatment regimen, and, and tell me what they did in that regimen. Our plan was to go ahead and go through with um, my chemotherapy, of course my re breast removal, and then my radiation therapy. Did they give you any thoughts or recommendations of how to get your health back after the treatment program? No, it was pretty much, you're alive, be glad about that, and figure out how to do it in a couple of years and how to get through it. I'm really excited that you're here because I think that's where medicine drops off and really where I start because my real focus is to build you up. So we want to put all of the good things back into your system. We want to help your immune system so that we reduce the likelihood of having the cancer return in the best ways that we know how. And if we put that energy in those, those building blocks in your system, we can really shorten that time period and help you to get your mojo back. I'm a fourth generation doctor. My great grandfather started our office a hundred years ago and then his son joined him and then my dad who was the third generation and I joined him and he would always jokingly tell me that it's the fourth generation that screws things up. And I think he did that you know, to motivate me to never rest on your laurels. You always have to get continually better. Chiropractic has been great for my family. When I was growing up, I don't recall my father ever taking a vacation to take a vacation. He loved his work and he says, when I can't work, I don't want to be here. He worked up to within a week when he passed away. Now we're into the fourth generation. My son says, I was destined to be a chiropractor because I was born September the 18th, which is official birthday of chiropractic. And we named him Jason, which means healer. He says, I was destined to be a chiropractor. My dad had uh, prostate cancer. Um, I believe he was diagnosed in 2003, 2004. Decided to do a radiation seed implant with external beam radiation. And after those treatments, his physiology was never the same yet. He developed severe ulcerative uh, colitis. And we learned later that uh, that is one of the side effects of the external beam radiation. I love my work. Uh, I think it's spilled over into the family. It's passed on to me. Uh, I just love to help people. Yeah, I could have retired some time ago, but I'd rather work than retire. My dad went into the hospital December 20th. 
and then passed away December 27th from hepatorenal syndrome, which means that the liver and the kidneys fail at the same time. And um, it, you know, we were in the hospital and, and we were going through the treatment, learning about all of her recommendations and stuff like that. And, and he looked at me and he said, hey, you know, son, I've had a good run, it's time to go home. And so we took him home and he passed away at home December 27th. I had grown up in the practice and I just loved my dad. I wanted to emulate him. I got out of school and I came back to practice and he put his arm around me and he said, son, welcome to real life. And he said, what school has prepared you for is to not be a menace to the public, but it hasn't taught you how to be a healer. And this is where the real school starts, is it's in the trenches. I realized I'd learned all this stuff in school that was really, really important, but I didn't know how to relate to people. I didn't know how to communicate uh, to people. He said, the difference between you and me is that I know that I can help people, and you think and you hope that you can help people. And the patients know that. He said, you have to get to the know. When I sit down, I um, fold my knees, and they'll start bothering me within 20 minutes. They ultimately diagnosed it as MRSA, and I've been on just massive antibiotics. We're going to keep stimulating it to heal. Let's build up your immune system. I love doing the vitamin C infusions. And then we're going to use some dilute hydrochloric acid, which helps to clean out the lymph nodes or the infection processing centers. If we could develop a comprehensive integrative center where we could really offer patients a whole plethora of modalities, that is really the ideal setting to have healing occur. We started our office as a chiropractic office and then we added a whole bunch of clinical nutrition and herbal medicine and homeopathic medicine and then we incorporated acupuncture. And I know that there are times and places where medicine is really important and applicable to patients. So then I recruited a medical doctor to come in and work with us. And, and when I say recruited, I meant a true collaborative sense. So I don't care who gets the credit. I don't care which modality it is. Is it nutrition? Is it an adjustment? Is it acupuncture? Medical care? It, it doesn't matter. We just want to make sure that we put those building blocks in people so they improve. What we're doing is, is thinking out of the box, perhaps. But the other way of looking at it is to think inside several different boxes all at the same time and be able to pick and choose and say, okay, this part works for this, this part works for this. There's different ways of looking at the same problem and just being able to put them all together in a way that can just tremendously augment the healing process for the patients. Well, Jason's vision's always been probably four or five steps ahead of everybody else. What more, what else can we incorporate into the practice? Dr. Nelson brings a really good Chinese medicine component to the table. I do a little bit of traditional medicine. Dr. Vance does traditional medicine. Dr. Hollingsworth and mind-body healing. And so whatever's going on with the patient, we tailor their treatment plan to that. If we take the best of medicine and the best of alternatives of medicine and put it together, there's a sweet spot for our patients where we're getting just these incredible outcomes. When I called this clinic on the very first day, your dad picked up the phone. He spent over 30 minutes on the phone with me that day. And I didn't think anything of it until I came here, understood how busy it was, and I was like, that guy just took a lot of energy to spend that amount of time on the phone with some guy he never knew. This is the start of the 40th Iditarod. Come on back. I'm a journalist. I am trained to fight and to think for myself. The spring of 06, the front side of my corneas came off most painful thing I've ever been through. I was ready to stick knives in my legs. I thought I was dying. I kept saying to people, I think there's something really wrong here. I feel like I'm dying. I have these morbid thoughts all the time. And I think that's indicative of someone who's chronically ill. So compared to when we first saw you, what was it, about five, six years ago? Five years ago this month. You know, I'm not even the same guy. I mean, honestly. And, you know, when you go back to, to five years ago, there were all the physical stuff going on, but I came here pretty a really angry guy, really resentful guy. I came here not wanting to be here. I came here looking for reasons to run. I had been broken down to the point where I didn't know what the solution was, but I sure as hell didn't think it was in Pocatello, Idaho, <laughs> at a chiropractor's office that specialized in naturopathic medicine. And then I sat in that room and I started talking to other patients. and. I started seeing things happen for them, hearing things happening for them. Your dad started stacking all this paperwork up on me, and I started one by one reading through it. And that was a, a beautiful lesson that my dad taught me, was yeah. you've got to educate 
you, the people that are coming in that you just don't say, here, take two of this and call me tomorrow. Empower them. Empower them. And yeah. he, he wore out multiple copier machines, oh, millions crazy. of copies. And I'll never forget that because that's exactly what I needed in the healing process. I needed leadership, number one. I needed somebody to listen to me, number two. And I needed the empowerment of it. I knew at that moment, uh, you know, I'd been here for a month or something over my experience, and I knew that I was going to come here and be okay with dying at the hands of the people at the West Clinic before I allowed myself to die at the hands of somebody else. So um, I was okay with being here, you know, at that time. And the hope grew, uh, the experience grew. I've seen not only what's happened to me, but I've sat in that room, which I think is the genius of this clinic, and I've shared enough experience, strength, and hope with others, and I've had them share it the same with me, and I've seen so many lives changed here, uh, but I've seen so much dignity here. Keeping your dignity is so important. Staying positive is so important. Being empowered is so important. We can put titles on it. I don't know if the West Clinic's a throwback or whatever it is. I just know now it's four generations and a hundred years of caring. The proudest day of my life, my dad and I were just kind of talking and he looked at me for a minute and he's like, hey Jason, do you know that I would go to you now? And that's the proudest moment I've ever had and it made a huge difference in my growth curve. I mean, my practice just went skyrocketing. Getting to that no has been always a focus of mine. I'm relentless in finding out what can help people, what can I learn to make an improvement, how can we improve our team, how can we improve the outcomes that we're getting. You're giving them hope. You're giving them the strength to get back what they've lost in the past. You're helping them get their life back. I've had patients come from Bangkok, Thailand. I've had patients come from South Africa. We've had patients come from Russia. Um, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, all 50 states. The world in a small way comes to me and I like it here. This is where I grew up. This is where I choose to live. But when you help people, then they go out and they tell other people and they come to the booming megatropolis of Pocatello and then we do our very best to put all the building blocks in place. I don't care what other healthcare providers think. I don't care what the medical community thinks. I care if I'm helping the patient.